Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. This is my 2021 Ford F-150 Power Boost. And let's just say I'm at a bit of a crossroads with this truck. It has now left me in this situation about five or six times now where the truck just shuts off. I'm going to get off the highway here to a safer place and we'll talk a little bit more about what's been going on. Now when I bought this truck, I was incredibly excited about it. I had a 2015 GMC Sierra. It was just the extended cab, not a crew cab. My family had grown out of it and I have content on this channel that goes back quite a while and you can see I had some issues with that truck as well. I kind of missed that truck because what I've been dealing with with my F-150 here is honestly just a whole lot of terrible unreliability. I've owned this truck now for 30, 31 months. It's been in the shop for about three of those. So it's about 10% of the entire ownership experience. Now the real bummer about this is, well, I've spent quite a bit of time and money and some sponsorships on building this truck to be the rig that it is today, up into and including a six inch lift and I've really got this thing dialed to what I wanted it to be. I don't know, I really feel like I need to abandon this build. So I'm making this video really asking you guys, what do you think I should do at this point? I'll go over everything that I've experienced with this truck, but most recently, this thing required a new transmission at 35,000 miles. That's right, a whole brand new transmission at 35,000 miles. Now I understand things go wrong. It can happen with any vehicle, any manufacturer, but uh, this seems to be kind of a recurring theme with Ford that uh, not only is the vehicle down, but it's down for just a crazy amount of time. What was happening here with the transmission is that uh, when I was cruising down the highway at regular cruising speeds, uh, it didn't really seem to matter the conditions, the truck would just shut off. And of course, it's always going to happen when you are uh, least prepared for it to happen, middle of the highway, lose all propulsion, and then you're just kind of coasting. Everybody else is doing about 75, 80 miles an hour, and you lose that speed pretty quick. So getting across the entire highway to a safe stop, it's a, it's a challenge and also certainly a safety risk. Running the codes, it was showing some sort of engine disconnect. Aside from the truck just shutting off, there was actually zero shutters, any real indication that anything was wrong. So I would reset the computer and uh, it would just turn back on and let me go on my way. So this happened to me two times around town here and it wasn't something where I thought anything was actually really terribly wrong. I just assumed that maybe the computer needed to be reset. I had a work trip coming up. I drove the truck from Phoenix to Salt Lake City. That trip was 1,372 miles. So again, the stall had happened twice, but then I took it on a 1,300 mile round trip with zero problems until I got back home and then it happened again. I jumped in the truck, drove over to the dealership and decided I'm gonna try to get this thing to stall and literally limp into the dealership so that there's no question that there is a problem. Perfect. Well, we're in a good spot. Now here I am stranded a couple hundred feet from the entrance to the dealership to get in there, which is fine. My wife's actually coming. I, I could call a tow truck, go through all that, that stuff, but uh, her little SUV should be able to just kind of pull me in to the, uh, the parking lot. In the 15 minutes that it took for my wife to show up, I jumped in the truck, hit the ignition, and it fired back up again with no problem. So I drove it in and told them like, hey, look, I know this looks fine. I was literally just broken down outside of the dealership. I had video, which was key, um, and left it there. So a few days went by and I heard nothing from the dealership. Could not get anybody to call me back. So I just drove up there in a rental Tesla that I had at the time, kind of cornered the service manager showed them the video and uh, at that point they're like, okay, we know what the problem is. Several days later, almost actually about a week later, you're good to go, come pick the truck up. 
I picked it up, hopped on the highway, and the truck literally died within a mile of the dealership. I got the truck started again, looped back around, dropped the truck off, and said, try again. And this is when they took another uh, couple weeks to get the complete transmission swap done. So with this truck now, I have spent, uh, let's see, 30 months or so with this truck in my possession, and around three of those months have been in the shop. So about 10% of my ownership experience has been with me not even having the truck in my possession. Two months into owning this truck, this is kind of when it all started, the APIM module went bad. So the stereo system, uh, the screen would just go black and it was really frustrating for a couple months. Not the end of the world, but with a new truck, that was really frustrating waiting that 50 days for them to get the new module in for me to come in and swap it out. And then it wasn't long after that where I started actually having more severe issues where the truck was going into kind of like a limp home mode. I was losing power. I found EGR valve is broken and full of coolant. Pressure tested the EGR cooler and dunked underwater and found the EGR uh, cooler leaked internally. And they replaced that EGR cooler and EGR valve. And that process took 65 days. With the transmission swap at 23 days, we are at 88 days total of repairs. And then with a couple other times that it's been into the dealership for that APIM, now that the transmission's been replaced, the EGR valve uh, situation was solved. Am I stupid to let go of this thing? Because have all of the bugs been worked out and now a free transmission at 35,000, is it safe to assume that the, this one's not gonna go in another 35? Will it go another 150? I don't know. Obviously none of us know that, but I'm interested to know in the comments down below do you think once you've had these kinds of situations kind of over and over again, and, and again, more importantly, not even as much as the breakdowns, because I think most people understand it's possibly going to happen with any vehicle, but the duration it takes for them to make repairs is just absolutely, completely insane. And I've heard stories of other manufacturers having similar problems. I, I don't know, but... The alternatives at this point, I don't really quite know. I've looked at the GMC Sierra, which is what I came out of. I had problems with that truck. The Silverados, I tend to lean, this is the first Ford that I've ever owned, possibly the last. Uh, my dream truck was, and kind of still is, always uh, been a Raptor, but um, not sure that's the case anymore. So I tend to lean towards GM trucks because I do get the GM friends and family discounts, but I'm also a Costco member and Costco has really good deals with other manufacturers. But uh, the only real trucks that I'm probably interested in right now would be the GMC Sierra 1500, probably like AT4 trim. And I would probably opt for the diesel with that not so much the 6.2. The Ram 1500, I still think the Rams have probably the best in class interior um, in terms of seat comfort and just overall interior, but I'm also not super sold on Stellantis. I've also been tempted to just say, maybe I'm done with trucks for now and go with like a, a Tahoe or a Yukon, something that still has the ability to tow, which I absolutely need. And uh, anytime I've rented those vehicles, I travel a lot for work. Uh, they just ride super nice. And um, I'm just kind of getting really frustrated with trucks. So I don't know, guys, let me know in the comments down below. What would you do if you were in this situation? Would you stick it out with the truck you've already invested all this time and energy in, assuming that those repairs are good? Um, maybe I'll just ride this thing from 35,000 to like 45,000 miles and, and dump it at that point and see what else is on the market then. Certainly conflicted and uh, really bummed out with this experience with, uh, with Ford. I think if going to a dealership wasn't the equivalent of going in for a colonoscopy, I would uh, much consider going in and just kind of shopping around, but man, I just cannot stand going into the dealerships with this old antiquated sales practice, like they're smarter than everybody. Um, going to the dealership, aside from looking at vehicles, at the moment anybody there even starts speaking, um, I just, I don't know, 
don't have a lot of patience for that either. So with that being said, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. See you guys next time.